العالمين نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له والصلاه والسلام على اشرف الانبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين سبحانك لا علم لنا الا ما علمتنا انك انت العليم الحكيم ولا حول ولا قوه الا بالله العلي العظيم. Brother Chairperson, my dear colleague and brother Professor Dr. Sal Arabi indeed. the Dean of the Kulia of Islamic Knowledge and Human Sciences, Dr. Shukran, um, heads of departments, um, brothers and sisters, good friends, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It gives me great pleasure indeed to be um, back in IIUM, this time not having to fulfill any KPIs anymore. Uh, this time is to fulfill the KPI of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is Rahman al-Rahim. So he is very lenient, uh, very flexible, always insisting on use and not loss. And uh, following Rahmatan bin Adami. Very happy indeed to be back. Again, this is not my plan. This is his plan. My plan was to completely leave IMM and, and do some of the things. Uh, but somehow or other, Allah has been otherwise. So I got myself placed in healing for, well, I did not state for how long, but it is open ended as um, honorary uh, fellow. That is an Islamic uh, training center for the officers of religious departments in the whole of Malaysia. Uh, so, very happy to see um, many. I was hoping to see the, uh, the younger ones, because the younger ones are going to succeed us. They're going to be the leaders. Shukran is still the younger one, so that is okay. Uh, but the rest on this side, not quite young. Uh, on this left side, not quite young. So, so what the, 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 uh, the advantage of being not quite young is that you can do whatever you like. You can sleep, you can move out, you can go uh, anytime you like. But the young ones, I would like them to stay until the end. So I would like to engage the young ones. And I want them to uh, get as much as they like from this old one <laughs> standing here before you about the university, the history, the purpose, the objectives, the values, and the challenges uh, we are going through. So I'm grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As I said, I had planned some other things, but Allah planned something else, and of, of course, Allah did. Khairul Mercury is the best of planners. A uh, good example of that is how uh, before I left the university, I planned for uh, Muhammad Kamal Hassan Memorial Library. Some brothers didn't like it, the Prof. Said was also not happy with it. I said, Memo why memorial? But what I did not tell them but I told Norjanda why I put memorials because I did not think I would live that long. And I felt that after I left the university, the university will have other priorities. We should worry about, you know, Kamal Hassan's books. So it could be just left there. And so I thought I might as well do it on my own with the help of Dr. Norjanda. At that time she was not a doctor. Uh, so, uh, 
So we put up Kamal Hassan Memorial Library. And so it happened that one of the alumni came by and saw that, and he got very angry with the university because he thought, the university did this, and Kamal is still around, although uh, not in the university, but in, in Bani. So he went, uh, he expressed his uh, dissatisfaction emotionally, and uh, then he called me. He said, he told me, I said uh, brother, I'm not telling you his name, but the entrepreneur knows that. Um, I said, brother, do, please don't blame the university. It's not the fault of the university, it's me. You have to blame me. I am the one who insisted on putting Kamal Hassan Memorial on. And then he said, okay, that's the case. Do you mind if I change the title? I said, okay, go ahead, do it. So he changed it, he uh, beautified the whole thing. I think he spent a lot of money putting glass doors and beautification, interior decoration, of all those uh, Zina to the head. <laughs> all that, including my photo there. He insisted on all this thing. But, but this old man has a trick in his mind. So I told him, no, don't worry, we just do it uh, you know, the way he wants it. Because he will be there during the launching by our current rector. So after the launching, we can take all this out. He would come back, he would know about it. And true enough, he did not know. So we took out my picture. And other things. Of course, we cannot take out the last door. So, Allah planned it that way. So, I am now using M. Kamal Hassan Library as my office. And by the way, we are still, in, this is uh, the last day of Yam uh, Tashrid. So, we can, of course, make a lot of tabir, you know, uh, for this day. At the end of Asar, we will not have the chance to make more. Of course, we can continue to be other ways. Allah Akbar. Alright, so with that uh, as a preamble, let me just start with this. Okay, first, gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all the ni'ah that Allah has bestowed upon this uh, sinful servant. Allah knows how sinful his servant is. And uh, uh, if you try to uh, enumerate the uh, blessings and the favors of Allah, you'll never be able to do so. And true enough. And number two is my, I want to express my gratitude to Ali and for being very generous to me, helping me in many ways sustaining me and now of course rejuvenating In particular, to Dr. Abdul Rahim, the executive director of MSD, who was very concerned from the very beginning um, and offering me all kinds of generous assistance even I uh, I been left. And then his uh, assistant, Sister Zurima, who has also been um, kind towards me in many ways. And then to the academic staff of Centris, Indefatigable Dr. Noor Janna, the co editor of uh, Natural Sciences from the Worldview of the Quran in three volumes, who made it sure it was finally published. Because there were times when this old man got very fed up, you know, with the whole thing, and not to say give up, but just couldn't be bothered anymore. But she would continue slog on and, uh, until, until they completed it. Alhamdulillah. Thank you very much, Dr. Nurjana, for all that. And then she devoted her time to build up the MPH library with the help of the librarians. And I'm grateful to the librarians. And that time there was Dr. Hassan Basri, he left. And then Sister Sharifa took over, and they took care of the library. And now you have one staff every day to be there in the library. It's not a landing library, it is uh, in just to go and be and uh, relax. Um, with the help of uh, Sharifa, 
And then also our LUM alumni members, we have one here, uh, Dr. Anna. Dr. Anna here? Yeah, Dr. Anna is here, and of course, uh, 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 her son, so, so the side four of is here. Um, Aslam is on the way from Kotabaru. Dr. Ida, uh, Dr. Fatima is uh, the wife of Dr. Rahman, Dr. Amna, and others. And last but not least, to uh, Brother Shahdi, the chauffeur, uh, who has been driving, not driving me crazy, but driving me uh, very well to all places. Never had any problems with him over the last, I would say, maybe 10 years or more. And uh, every time I had to go to the hospital, he'd take me there. This is one of the privileges that um, the university extended to me. Uh, Dr. Dr. Rahim made sure that every time I wanted to go to the hospital, then Shahdi would take me there. Uh, before that, I used to grab a grab. Like this morning, I took the grab to come here. So, so I used a grab, and then he came to know about it. And I said, no, Shahdi will have to take me. And I have to go to the hospital. Three, four hospitals took care of me until now. So I'm grateful to all of this and many more uh, who have been very, very uh, kind and generous to me. Uh, so if I do not mention your name, please do not feel offended. Uh, of course, my guru. Professor Malik Badri is someone I have not mentioned yet, but he has also been a source of uh, great inspiration. And uh, every time he came, he saw, and he talked to me, then I felt, you know, uh, rejuvenated. And then my gratitude to the new rector uh, for reviving the vision of Islam uh, uh, and also for taking the, the song seriously. I thought I should not take song seriously, but he took it seriously. And of course, we, I put in Rahmatan al Alameen many years ago. Um, and now he is harping on that and, and making it a reality. So it's, he is trying to exercise um, something abstract into socio uh, economic, socio political facts on the ground. Um, and uh, leading the way is also, you know, the name of our song. And now he uses that as uh, our as a motto of his book. Um, and then also transforming our theoretical research. Um, people in human sciences, uh, particularly in review knowledge, will be more theoretical. And now he's making it, uh, orienting it to be more practical useful to the society. Uh, so he's prioritizing inter and also transdisciplinary or integrated research. Instead, you know, we in Rebbe knowledge people remaining in our silos, uh, secluding ourselves from the realities around the world in splendid isolation uh, of one's comfortable zones. And also, uh, he appointed me as honorary fellow of Centris. Uh, that brought me back here. <laughs> if he did not appoint me as honorary fellow, I would remain stuck in uh, Bangi and at Ilim. But uh, he sent his people there, uh, Dr. Rahim, and told me that the uh, rector wants me to come back here uh, more often. And uh, so then I got a letter from him appointing me as honorary fellow of Centris. And uh, so now I am here uh, at least four times a month. So I am here, by the grace of Allah, four times a month. One for what I call, the purpose is Islamization of knowledge. But I am using Fizilal Quran for that. And then for then the other one is uh, Aslamatul Al-Nafs. Islamiyat al Nafs, and I'm using Al Mazali's Al Mubnikat for that. Uh, so I'm covering the two dimensions of my 
for HK. Uh, then I am also available for academic consultation, not for the senior professors, but for the young ones. Okay? People below 40. Those about 40 not allowed to consult me. Prof, uh, please come forward. <laughs> Okay, just just put uh, my back down. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and then, uh, yeah, for academic consultation, also once a month, and uh, this is open from twelve to two or two to four or ten to twelve. Um, Dr. Noor is in charge of my uh, calendar, so she will. like to really meet the young lecturers because I want to know their problems and if I could help I would be very happy to help and uh, then the fourth is my uh, presence in St. Louis as an advisor so I would attend the meetings come to St. Louis meetings and be an advisor uh, with Dr. Akmal and his uh, assistant Dr. Alma Dr. Vigenda These are the four times a month uh, I am here because I have been appointed as, as honorary fellow. Um, um, and not least, I said for um, last but not least, for rectors linking IUM. To UN Agenda 2030 with the 17 uh, Sustainable Development Goals using the approach of Qasid al Sharia and Rahmatan al Alameen, Mission of Islam. I think this is uh, something new. Uh, many people do not expect this. Um, some people may have their misgivings, uh, but I took all this very, very positively. As um, a great opportunity. Because to me, these um, new approaches, new concerns about global matters um, actually opens up a whole new horizon for Islamic action. And whether in the form of Islamization or in the form of relativization or in the form of contemporization in the form of integration, or synthesis, or critique, or whatever. Because the SDGs, we might say our vision or agenda 2030, is a culmination of uh, universal concerns about the state of the world and the future of planet Earth. You know, all the conferences we call Rio, we have Rio, and then you have before that Chanchu and Cancun, and then Rio, and then finally Paris, and then this year we could have another one in Paris. And thousands of scientists, not just a few, uh, in spite of American skepticism uh, or American government skepticism, not the scientists, certainly not the environmentalists, but uh, the scientists and environmentalists all over the world. Of them which have been warning uh, the world and the countries to do something about uh, all this, um, about climate change uh, resulting from the uh, emission of, uh, of carbon dioxide uh, gases and other poisonous gases and all that, coming from the use of uh, fossil fuel and all that. And now many countries are not alternatives of fossil fuel. We may, have, we may have to do that also in the next 10, 20 years. Um, but uh, the implications of food production, 
insecurity on water, on, on the quality of the air, and then population expected to, to be in 2030 or 2050 about, uh, about uh, 9 billion uh, and more. And by 2070, it's going to be about 10 to 11 billion. And planet Earth is this really sick now. And, and the envir environmentalists, American, Canadian environmentalists, have said this 20 years ago that the, um, uh, the, the development and the, uh, the obsession of economic growth, uh, the trajectory of, of economic development uh, is certainly unsustainable. <coughs> You've got to do something about it. Planet Earth just cannot take it. So they've been wanting, but you know, countries take it easy, and of course America blaming China rather than blaming itself for all this. But we have to also bear, you know, the the brunt of this. Uh, we have tsunami before, and hopefully not another one. Uh, and, and just a few days ago, a uh, huge storm in Langkawi affected. With 130 schools being shut down, and then you have the uh, Johor uh, River being uh, poisoned by the irresponsible uh, companies and factories and industries. So we are having our share of this global problem. So this opens up a new dimension for Muslim thought and Muslim action and Muslim academia, or Islamic academia. So that's why I said that uh, we, we have marginalized these issues. We are concerned more about our Aqida, our Sharia, and our Akhla, and the establishing Islamic State, what have you. Uh, and, and so this opens up this room, a new, you might say, a new world for Islamicization, a bright new world for Islamicization. Relevantization, contemporization. Can I use Farsi for contemporization? In Arabic. It works, eh? Uh, Farsi, okay. Uh, relevant, relevantization, I still cannot get the word for it. Okay, you can give me the translation. I'm not using the transliteration, so please forgive me. No, I'm not using transliteration. Because I want to read it fast. So I think instead of Imam, instead of using the dash, I use double A. Islah, and the patient doesn't have the dot. So please, all those uh, uh, academic uh, pedantics, uh, please uh, uh, forgive me for that. Uh, I marked a lot. Umrah, and Ahadatul Ibad Hadara, which is the reconstruction of human civilization. That's what we should have been doing. Of course, Prof. and Dr. Nigeria and Dr. Ben Nabi, of course, has been talking about this, you know, that we are the people with this responsibility to reconstruct the modern civilization and our enemy, Rahmat So, more of this in the next. So I'm really grateful uh, for the Nava Matter for, for opening up to us these great opportunities. We cannot remain uh, in our siloed, uh, in our compartmentalized world, uh, oblivious to all the challenges going on around us. Now I go to expectations. My expectations. In view of the new challenges in contemporary and future Malaysia, future of Asia, future of Muslim countries, and we are entering into an era of uncertainties and national anxieties, and the world entering into what Ziauddin Sarkar calls a post normal era. And he has an institute in London devoted to post normal studies, not abnormal studies. Abnormal? Well, there are many people undergoing that abnormalities. Though we are now in 
post number, and some people would put it post truth. As the truth is no longer uh, there, you can just manipulate anything and, it, uh, and, and claim it to be true, but it's not true. We have social, political, and religious tensions. Hopefully, not much more, but you can never say. Um, and of course, the ecological crisis. Not as bad in our country, but um, in, in, in Indonesia, certainly, Indonesia and the um, Philippines. Then the effects of serious climate change. Um, I think the scientists are saying that we should try to keep the temperature below 2 degrees Celsius before the end of this century. If we go beyond that, then we, before we come to the end of Prolonged uh, effects of international political turbulence. Some turbulence are being manufactured. The one in the Middle East is manufactured. So, uh, manufactured by uh, superpowers for their interest, so that you continue buying arms from them. Because the economy is going down. One of the ways to prop up the economy is to sell arms. And if you can sell that to rich countries, then you keep the economy up and you keep the Muslim countries down. Um, deterioration, uh, well, economic deterioration, uh, in Malaysia we're feeling, feeling it down. People B40 and below is feeling it very bad. And people in the rural areas are very, very bad. But this is now, but imagine the next 10, 20 years, before 2030. And that is why I think 2030 is a good one stone for the world. We will have 17 years because it was um, initiated into zero one time. Now it's zero to zero almost. So you have another a decade to go and a decade. It's too short to really plan things in a big way. Um, food shortages. Unemployment, um, our school, um, 700 auto graduates are unemployed now. And this can be worse. Urban poverty, look at the conditions of uh, people living in those uh, PPRT. Very small groups. Children cannot stay inside, they have to stay outside and then outside they do all kinds of bad things. These are Muslim children and families living around Kuala Lumpur in those high-rise flats, living in boxes. This is now. Uh, then entrenched cancer of bribery. This is not just Malaysia's problem, it's a problem of the Muslim world. So, um, and I feel ashamed <coughs> Every time I compare uh, how our countries perform vis-a-vis -vis the Scandinavian countries, vis-a-vis -vis Singapore, Singapore and Hong Kong are usually among the top ten in terms of transparency, the um, perception of transparency and, and integrity. So, but how come Muslim countries, with all with all the uh, the Sunnah uh, and the mosques? the beards and the, all that uh, we're not able to prevent or, or cure this cancer uh, of primary. Hopefully it's not terminal. So hopefully something can be done by maybe second uh, or fourth degree. This is the last, isn't it? So maybe we are in the second and third degree, hopefully. Uh, I mean, corruption and fraud. Uh, I was going to uh, Second, uh, on the first day, second day, I was going to go uh, to, um, uh, to the old airport and in the car uh, from there to Taman Tun, Taman Kampung So the driver was telling me, uh, 
from this, this uh, put your signal. I usually go with the signal because they usually policemen are up there. Uh, and usually they will stop and they smile and they'll be asking for money. And because if you are given the ticket then you have to pay over 300 and the hassle of having to go to the police station and all that. So people will just give the money. And this is still going on. And uh, this is in uh, this is not in Bangi or in the villages, this is in, in the city. And policemen are still being bright. Of course, we know the economic background of this. Uh, the public are in the, the low salary, uh, the volume of work. We understand, we sympathize with the police officers. Uh, but they felt no pinch of guilt at all for accepting money. And, and of course, for, for most people, the culprit, uh, you know, they don't mind paying rather than having to go through the hassle of going to the police uh, station. This is in Malaysia. What about Egypt? What about uh, Iraq? What about uh, Afghanistan? What about Pakistan? What about Bangladesh? others. Then also drug abuse. We don't talk about drug abuse because it is so well entrenched and as if, as if uh, there's nothing we can do about it. And uh, the number keeps increasing. And the worst part, the most shameful thing is, is our children. 85, if not 90 percent, because I was talking to one of these um, junkie officers who used to work with the drug addicts. He said um, about 87, 80, 90 percent are Muslim children and still are Muslim children. The pushers are non-Muslims. The big uh, talkies are non-Muslims. But the consumers are Muslims. See, this has been going on for the last 40 years. Where are we? permissive, hedonistic culture of the younger generation and now the new disease of, of babies addicted to new gadgets and social media including my own grandson having this problem of addiction to the gadget and I, I'm not trying to solve this problem I can solve the problem of postgraduates but five year old babies I'm not trained for that I need to go through another training, but there's no time. Social media, of course, Prof. Uh, Fauzan, this is his area now, alhamdulillah. He's going all over the world telling people to use the Islamic way of using the media, the Islamization of the media. So we expect our staff and students in IUM and Kulia of Review Knowledge and Human Sciences in particular, our Kulia, my Kulia, I belong to this Kulia from the very beginning as the first founding dean of the Kulia, with Dr. Abdul Hamid also supporting in many ways. So we expect our Kulia to produce leaders, our students to become the problem solvers of the world, not the problem creators of the and new leaders, and new leaders. I cannot stop talking about the new leaders. New breed of God-fearing, competent, muktati, uh, efficient, humble, honest, with a with sense of accountability to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with awareness of al akhirah what's going to happen on the Day of Judgment with all that, with omatic, shuratic attitudes. Shuratic it is from shura. So using, uh, you know, what I say, it's not he likes to add this thing. The Arabic word with, with, with something, uh, doing it English, omatic, uh, tawhidic, shuratic, 
hadithi, Qur'ani. You better get used to it. Um, with taqwa, with um, jadama, competency, uh, amana, adala, tawadu, rahma, and true automatic disposition. So we expect the academic staff of IUN now. The human sciences, academic staff, going by what Shatahir Jamir and also Tariq Ramadan have said, these are the people, ulama al waqi Ulama al waqi So here we have Prof. Said Arabi Ide, Prof. Fawzan, uh, uh, Prof. Shukran, these are, they belong ulama al waqi These are the scholars who know the realities of the world, who are studying the realities of the world, either politically, sociologically, psychologically, or communicationally, if I can use that word, yeah? or even history. So you are the experts of worldly affairs. So you are ulama al waqi according to Tariq uh, Ramadan. and also uh, Yusuf al qaradawi And people in revealed knowledge and human science, revealed knowledge and heritage, they are the ulama and nas Ulama and nas These are scholars of the religious texts. Their research is based on texts of wahi. So they are experts in Quran and Sunnah. These are texts. These are authoritative revealed text and they are experts in that so mm -hmm. i think we have reached a point where no one group can solve the problem of humanity or mankind or social or even individual by just referring to only one side one wing we need both wings to fly the ummah can fly when the ulama al warfare and the ulama al nas work together not remaining in splendid compartmentalization, in splendid isolation um, from one another. And, and the work, now of course now with our rector, now emphasizing transdisciplinary research, interdisciplinary research, and all that, this is just timely. So we need to work on this. Because social problems are complex problems. And they, you require the input from different dimensions. So man is a complex being, a society even more complex. So you need to have both. Dr. Abdul Hamid brought you both together in 1990 for a, a great purpose. Because he, Dr. Abdul Hamid, saw the people in revealed knowledge of human sciences basically in social sciences, as the leaders. To him, he, he felt that uh, doctors, engineers, should be doing their work, you know, taking care of health, good instructions, not as leaders. He thinks that the social scientists are the leaders because they know social problems. It's not about building bridges. It's not about construction of buildings. It's about constructing human society the best foundations and the foundations have to be made up of living knowledge and acquired human knowledge. So we were, Dr. Abdul Hamid brought us together in 1990 for this big purpose and now with these problems on our heads and this is a time for us to be relevant if not to be solving the problem out there. Maybe they got it from the Muslims, I don't know. 
but Christian scholars also refer to the book of God, which is the universe, and then uh, the Bible, uh, which is the word of Jesus. According to them, uh, um, what we know is not the word of Jesus, it's with the word of his disciples, or later people who came back okay, and wrote about what they uh, heard about Jesus. Anyway, it's a combination of two books. So, Shatara calls this a general This is the way forward. You cannot just have one book and say, this is it. And I don't think the Mufti can just give a fatwa on his own. Of course, you have only one Mufti. In, uh, in Malaysia, you have one. There are also state Muftis. Uh, so, there are many Muftis in Malaysia. But, but even the, 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 the production of fatwa should be based on the bringing together experts in the relevant fields. So, uh, Tariq Ramadan was telling us in his book, Radical Reform, that um, some, that kind of collaboration can be taking place in Kuwait. But I think in, uh, I think in Malaysia, I think we, we already have that. Of course, with Islamic banking, we have the conventional bankers sitting together with the Fuqaha, the scholars of the Mu'anhalat, sitting together. So it's, it's going on in a way. But we don't want the, the Islamic scholars, the, the Fuqaha, uh, sort of um, being, uh, being manipulated by the, uh, by the conventional people. So this has become to me a necessity in this day and age of knowledge interconnectivity and information explosion. Explosion of truth also with it. Now, new horizons. Several new horizons. To me, the advent of UN Agenda 2030, I, I did address this um, in, uh, in, in EPO um, before my non renewal of my contract. Um, but I, of course, I did not popularize it here. But now, alhamdulillah, with our new rector addressing this issue, now the horizons are open before our eyes. Um, agreed upon by 193 countries, including Muslim countries, Malaysia, Indonesia. Indonesia is also trying to uh, meet the target. And, uh, World Bank and uh, UNDP and and uh, and Badan uh, Badan uh, Sakat uh, in Indonesia are working together to find ways and means of what is now being popularized as green uh, finance. And green is uh, in a way uh, uh, an Islamic symbol. So I think people are going Islamic without knowing it. So never mind, let them use green, and then they find, ah, oh, this is Islam, it's too late to turn back. Might as well go forward into Islam. Um, so, this extension of IOHK mission in IUM, for me, this opens up ways and channels and windows and doors and highways for IOHK mission no longer just confined to academia and also uh, a few academia under uh, triple IT sort of influence. Uh, so by doing so, we are contributing to the solution of urgent common global issues facing the world and planet Earth for the next decade and more. Uh, and you know, uh, so I don't want to repeat, I think you know this by now, if you don't know, then where have you been all this while? 17 global goals. Um, all right. Um, okay, just let me just read because because for every one of these goals, we have to think how to apply Maqasid as How to apply even Maqasid uh, 
how to apply maqasid an insan, maqasid an islam, al Quran, and so on, not just maqasid al sharia. Even maqasid al sharia can also be expanded, and scholars have expanded it. The current the contemporary scholars, Qaradawi expanding it, Jasir Auda expanding it, I think, um, well, I'm not sure. Sunni, I'm not sure. The, uh, many people are expanding it. These are expansions. The five remain four, but then you can have branches from it to address new issues. So the 17 goals, each one of them can be covered by the maqasid al-sharia. But don't forget, and I tried it, but I didn't have the time to go through, 169 targets. Each goal has at least three uh, main targets, and each target has sub-targets and so on. When you look into it, you begin to, uh, to float in the air. Life begins to float in the air. Maybe you don't float in the air. Because uh, those are measurable targets. That's the beauty about it. They're measurable. Of course, we have our critique of SDGs, and I would mention it. Because uh, the SDGs look at three interconnected dimensions of human economic, social, and environmental. So you have the three uh, circles, basically. And where is the moral? Where is the spiritual? Where is the eschatological? Where is the metaphysical? Where is al-akhirah? Where is a ruh? Whereas ruh is so essential. Many of these other problems could be seen as actually rooted in the diseases of the ruh, of the heart, of the nurse. That's where we come in. And that's our specialization. We are the doctors of the heart. And we are supposed to go to be there. People in Rasuluddin, people in Fiqh and uh, people in Quran and Sunnah. They are supposed to be there, providing the panacea, uh, the therapy for these dimensions. We don't deny the importance of the social, the economic, the environmental. We can work with them, no problem at all. But for each of them, there is a spiritual dimension. There is a metaphysical dimension. There is an eschatological dimension. There is an ethical, moral dimension, not addressed by the United Nations or by the UNDP. So we go in, not with a sense of arrogance, look, we have the whole thing, just take it from us. Go in there with humility, with humility to say, look, uh, maybe there's another way of looking at our problems, which we have ignored. But I can understand why you and the or you and will not address this issue. Because the moment you bring up spiritual, moral, ethical, then the religions are going to quarrel. And they want to avoid this. So they put aside all these controversial things, and they are the most important things from Islamic point of view. Right? So they are addressing poverty, hunger, pollution, um, inequalities, poor quality of education, um, suppressing women. And these are, to me, symptoms of deeper diseases of the heart, of the soul. And who is giving us this truth about human progress? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Creator Himself. The Creator Himself has said in the in the Qad'a wa ma sawaha fa'alhamaha fujuraha wa taqwaha so Allah Himself is telling us the problem. You cannot get this answer from UNDP. You cannot get this from philosophers. They will be quarreling with one another until doomsday. And, and that is why I think philosophy has failed its purpose and condemned to death by Stephen Hawking in one of his latest interviews. With, uh, Science and um, philosophy is dead. Dead for them, or for us. Philosophy, of course, not in the sense of just um, a mental uh, gymnastics, but it is trying to understand the hikmah behind what is happening in the world. And the, the uh, um, is 
as been stated by many people, is the, is the philosophy of Islam, the philosophy of Islamic jurisprudence. So it's philosophy with a practical purpose, not just for, uh, for the mind to go into abstraction and enjoy this uh, wonderful uh, trip into nirvana, just for yourself.
kesejahteraan. From our point of view, kesejahteraan must include the spiritual and the moral. Without that, it is not kesejahteraan. Even success, true success is al-falah. True failure is al-khusran. So, so many concepts. So if we engage the people uh, involved in, in this, then we are also indirectly imparting Islamic messages, Islamic teachings, indirectly, in fact indirectly doing da'wah to the non-Muslim world. And once they are convinced that you can do it in the proper way, I think Maqasid the Sharia can be explained in a very rational way and it can be seen as something universal. So that is also opening the door to Islam and not just opening the door for I and you have to bring in uh, the scholars. Uh, achieving gender equality, it depends what you mean by gender equality. Okay? Of course, equity is fine with us, but if we talk about equality in the sense that both men and women are treated equally by God, based on your actions, not based on your gender, that's fine. But then responsibilities are not the same. Capabilities are not the same. But we have to understand also that the UNDP people and UN people, they have scholars who belong to the worldview of secular humanism. And some of them may be also uh, leaders of, uh, of feminism in the West. So they find a place in the UN organization. So they get their thing in. Uh, sustainable management of water and sanitation for all. We begin with what is water? And where does water come from? And Allah says, He creates everything from water. So water is in a sense a very, very sacred, not that sacred by, by sacred, it doesn't have any divine quality, but that Allah has created for a noble purpose. But that idea of the separateness of water uh, is not with the West. Uh, maybe with the Hindus, um, because some of the river ages uh, is considered sacred, but their sacredness may be defined as something else, could be, you know, could be a manifestation of, of the deities, but not in our sense. Um, Access to affordable, reliable, sustainable, modern energy for all. Yeah, okay, we have a problem for that. But there's another dimension that this is the ethical dimension. In the Quran, Allah so many times tells us that everything is created for you. Sakharakum sakharakum this, sakharakum that, sakharakum. We have made things subservient for you. La'allakum tashkurun. And what he wants from us is not. We cannot pay him back, just be grateful. And shukur is not that. And in the Western conception, shukur is to the nation, shukur is to the leader, shukur is to the ideology, shukur is to the country, not to God. Whereas you are using God's resources. Even the, the mind, the intellect, the ability to think, the ability to, uh, to uh, be intelligent is God given. But uh, in the worldview of secular humanism, or agnosticism, or empiricism, or naturalism, or materialism, atheism, postmodernism, positivism, um, these uh, notions are not there. Uh, building resilient infrastructure, this is where cut and uh, comes in, uh, inequality within and among countries, uh, what mechanism can we bring in, zakat is one mechanism, uh, wakaf is another mechanism, and, and many other things, takaful is one mechanism, um, and making cities and human settlements inclusive, say, this is again cut come in, sustainable consumption and reduction patterns, uh, 
uh, economic uh, faculty can come in. Um, climate change, um, many uh, disciplines come, can come in here. Use of the ocean, seas, and land. these are all. Um, these have to do with the environment. I think seven of the goals have to do with the environment. And the other ten divided between economics and social. The moral and the spiritual are not there. This is where we come in. Not to condemn, but to help. Because to provide them the, uh, the true reality, uh, which is alam al-shahada and alam al ghaib Alam al ghaib is not addressed at all. Even alam shahada is not addressed the way it should be addressed. Because alam al-shahada contains ayatullah. So everything in the world is an ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ayatullah al -kawliya. So a lot of things we have in our bag to be delivered to the rest of the world. <coughs> Protect, restore, and promote sustainable use of terrestrial ecosystems. Sustainably manage forests, condemn desertification, <coughs> halt and reverse land degradation, halt biodiversity loss. <coughs> Part of it is happening in Malaysia. I do not know about desertification, but um, maybe some countries in ASEAN may be experiencing this now. But reverse land degradation is happening everywhere. And um, sustainably managed forest, this is a real challenge in Malaysia. Because uh, you have every year, you have a burning of, of the forest. And then number 16, promote peaceful and inclusive societies for sustainable development. So again, the goal, the, uh, uh, the, um, the goal is sustainable development. Because without it, planet Earth cannot survive. So they have to have all these things. But as we said, Islam has its own notion of development and sustainable. And sustainable development from Islamic point of view is not quite the same as UNDP's conception of sustainable development. We accept the economic, the social, and that, but we have to add on to all that. You know, because man, and this goes back to the conception of man, he is basically, he is essentially growth in a body. And that body is made up of, of earth uh, components and that will decay. It's the world that survives. And it's the world that thinks. It's the world that feels. It's the world that connects with people. It's the world that um, accepts your values and so So that dimension is missing. Maybe by 2030, I think many of you will be around. I won't be around. So don't worry, you will not miss me. But uh, then you may have, you may, Muslim countries, with, if they can be united, if they can put their experts. We have what, 57, 58 countries. If United Nations Muslim bloc were to say, look, brothers, we can't go on this way. You, know, you have to address the spiritual, the moral, the ethical. Keep to your religions, no problem. We're not imposing our religion. But please bring in the ethical, the moral, and the spiritual, however you want to define it. But the way we define it, we want to do it our way. If Muslim countries can show that by 2030, then at least by 2050, hopefully things will be better. And then by the time uh, your, your grandchildren uh, comes to 2077, the beginning of the 16th century Hijra, hopefully things will be better for the people. If uh, Yom al Qiyamah doesn't care about that. We don't know. But even if it's going to occur, Hadith says, even if you know it's coming the next day, you still have a seedling, plant that seedling. That is a positive attitude of Islam. Not submitting to just fate, things are going to end anyway. Why plant? But the Prophet said, plant it. So that is a positive thing about, about the, 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 the prophetic worldview. 
Uh, 17, the last point, um, implementation, revitalize global partnership. Okay. All right. Then I come to, uh, this is still on the board, uh, opening the horizons. So we're using my positive shape. And um, but we should not forget, always uh, when we talk about this um, concept of the Qasid or Satiya um, before Hadara, before that, Qa'la Hadara, Najib or Satiya, now Rahmatan al Alameen. Don't forget, they're all three in one. What, what we have done in the wrong way. Just isolate Hadara and forget the rest. Then we have isolated Wasatiya, um, forget the rest. Now we're taking Rahmatan, forgetting the rest also. So I'm saying Wasatiya and Khairu uh, Ummah, these are the mission for the Ummah. Al Anbu bin Ma'roof, one mission. The other one is Shuhada al Nas, a second mission. But bring all this together, it becomes Rahmatan al alim So we have our own triune mission, not trinity, triune mission, three in one. So I don't want, after this government is over, then another one comes up and says, uh, Just picking from the Quran, this is a cherry picking, whatever is convenient to become a political slogan, you take it. You don't want to take what has been taken by others because that means you are, you are not new. It's nothing new. But you have to take the Quran only. We have to tell all these people, So Islam kafa is what we need to emphasize all the time. So you have Al-Amru bin Ma'ru and Nahi Al-Amru bin and these are really very, very challenging missions to become shuhada al nas to become, you know, witnesses uh, over mankind about, say, truth, honesty, <coughs> <and> integrity, amal <coughs> ma'ruf. So the one becoming witnesses in the eyes of Allah is the one embodying those values, not the one just preaching those values. Preaching would be easy, like what I'm doing is actually preaching. I'm quite happy with that, but uh, but uh, but the, the real thing is how to embody, how to manifest, how to internalize, how to make all this part of your being without having to sit in too many words. But since I don't have that in my being, so I use too many words. Okay, so the new horizons, if I can just list them, one is an opportunity to check to share with other people with UN and international community uh, the Quranic worldview and clarify uh, the secular humanist or positivist perceptions or misconceptions regarding success and failure. What is true success? What is true failure? What is prosperity? What is misery? What is victory and defeat? What is life and death? And in, when it comes to life and death, then we hear that Allah says, do not think that those matters of Allah are dead. Bal. In the Allah you In the Allah you Those who are killed, they are not dead. They are being sustained by Allah. So in other words, our conception of life and death not the same as their conception of life and death. So for you know, so one who is no longer the brain is dead, the heart is dead, is dead. Right? But to Allah, alive and being subhanAllah. So so many things uh, from our worldview uh, which the world is looking forward to. I do believe that this is something you might say emotional or not something rational. That this contemporary civilization cannot survive for too long. 
maybe by 2050, you might see already real symptoms of the collapse. And by the end of this um, century, then I think um, could be the end of Western civilization as we know it, with the partition of Europe, with the uh, internal collapse of USA. We don't know what's going to happen to the Muslim world. We hope our leaders are not going to repeat the mistakes of the past. That's why we need to produce the generation now for the new leaders, for our grandchildren, your grandchildren, are going to be the leaders in 2077 when we come to the next uh, Italy century, inshallah. So, in an excellent also C3, excellent opportunity to introduce the approach of al Hasid al Sharia as universal necessary objectives of comprehensive and holistic human development. Not just sustainable development, but comprehensive and holistic human development, embracing the social, political, economic, environmental, intellectual, moral, spiritual, eschatological, ukhrawi dimensions. It's another great opportunity to break out of silence, I mentioned this earlier, of compartmentalization, of self-imposed osla and fragmentation by venturing into transdisciplinary perspectives. We can also harness Tawhidic sciences. I think by 2050, Tawhidic sciences and technology would be the dominant, the, main, uh, the mainstream sciences by 2050. Of course, I will be around, but your grandchildren can, those who remember, you tell your grandchildren, uh, Grandpa Kamal Hassan did say this uh, on the 14th of August, 2019. And, and his, colleague, uh, his colleagues agreed to it. That includes Professor Said Arabi, he did also another former rector. So, great opportunity to break out of silos. We can also harness Tawhidic sciences and technology for green plus akhirat future of mankind. Because now people are using green, fine. But green is only for this world. But for us, green is also for the hereafter because the, uh, the, uh, you know, the inhabitants of the agenda used to wear green, uh, green silk uh, uh, clothing. <laughs> What was the name? Yeah, the And so, so green is um, is is the uh, afterlife uh, symbol for for prosperity. But they're using green, and and I don't blame. They are among the first to use green, the green movement in Europe for the environment. And, uh, fighting against the killing of whales. And they're doing very good work, really. I mean, they're very serious about it. And many Europeans were very serious about this. They don't eat uh, meat anymore. They're, they go vegetarian. Not for religious reasons, but for environmental reasons. And of course, we hope one day that the research on artificial meat can really be successful so that we don't have to depend on, we don't have to keep on slaughtering the cows for, for, for Kurban is okay, we need the real cows, not, not artificial cows. <laughs> but other than that, we can eat other things. Uh, what we need is just protein, isn't it? So we can get from vegetables and, and to artificial meat. And I was looking at one to video on TV. Uh, yeah, they have developed artificial meat, but hopefully it's not more costly than the real meat. Uh, so green alternatives. I think that should be our, our university now have to be doing greener and greener inshallah. And the and the and the streams with the uh, you know, stream of our life uh, inshallah. I don't think it's going to be green because we're not in charge of what's up there uh, in the mountains. As long as we're not in control of what's up there, there's no way we can make this green. Because we are just inheriting uh, all that uh, from uh, from the source. Up there, and more and more development going on. So our street may not be green, but Alhamdulillah, our trees are green, 
and inshallah our people will be clean, our ideas should be clean also inshallah, not uh, brown or black. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, oh, sorry, I didn't tell you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. They put in green shirt today. Yeah, that's really bad. Oh, this is the bad thing. Uh, yeah. And then an excellent opportunity to introduce to the world the Islamic conception of development in the comprehensive and holistic meaning of the term. The contemporary Muslim experts' views of the maqasid, the Sharia high objectives, this is very good view. Uh, I think um, uh, so this in Yasin. 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 The higher objectives um, can be uh, you know, understood not just as preserving, protecting, conserving, but actually developing and enhancing. So when you say here's an apple, it's not just protecting an apple, it's not just preserving it, it's not just, you know, but it is developing it and enhancing it. So that, that's, that's good. That's what we need. So many things can come in. In fact, I think one brother, one scholar in America was saying, he did not say Islamization of, of, of knowledge, but he said this is uh, Islamization of, of, the, of, the, of the intellect. So Hezul Aqal, you know, this is a proper use of the God-given, uh, well, uh, the most precious gift of Allah is the Aqal. And, and using it in the proper way, the way that he wants it, leads you to products which are green, in other words, which are really good. And this is Islamization of the intellect, which we are also pursuing here. So you can use him so Akhan. Now, at least Islamization, IOHK, uh, has a new, uh, you might say, philosophical underpinning. Before this, we were using mainly Iqra. Using the Iqra, using the story of Adam you know, to, to, to become the foundation for Islamization of the internet. Now we can use Maqas in the Sharia for another uh, philosophical foundation uh, underpinning uh, the agenda of Islamization. Okay, good. Another 30 minutes left. So I will hurry up. Um, <coughs> Anyway, so there are so many things that you can uh, 
amplify and improve, beautify uh, the principles of system. And I'm sure you and you are very, very happy if you do that. In fact, they would like to see how different religious communities, how faith communities would try to uh, accept this and then embellish, expand, as long as we are moving towards one goal. That is, in Islam, in fit maslaha of the world as a well. whole. To them is well-being of, of the planet. But for us it's maslaha. And uh, this principle maslaha uh, underlies uh, the concept of maqasid. So uh, here I come to new opportunities for Islamic finance, social impact, and for uh, application of Islamic ethics and Islamic spiritual values because UNDP conception and development focuses on social, economic, and environmental interlinkages, neglecting the moral, spiritual, and eschatological dimensions of human development. An example of Islamicization and relevantization of SDGs is the introduction of Islamic green finance development, ecosystem and prospects. And here is a long quotation from the Securities Commission Malaysia. Uh, they have come up with a report uh, working together with the World Bank. Um, and uh, based on the conference they had in Kuala Lumpur in 2018. So they came up with this uh, using the Makase Sharia. This is what uh, Datu Sri uh, Ranjit Singh said. He says the Makas, and he said using, of course, something else works for him, but uh, this is what he says. Islamic finance shares similar underlying principles as that of sustainable finance. That is, financial stability and economic growth. We have that in some finance. Poverty alleviation and wealth distribution financial and social inclusion, as well as environmental preservation. This has allowed, therefore allowed for Islamic finance to capitalize on these similarities, not to become capitalists, but to capitalize on these similarities, to become a natural vehicle to propagate the elements of green finance. Of course, for us, green future means this world and Allah. We want a green future in Allah. We don't want a green future here and a red future in Allah. It's possible. If you forget the Ufrawi dimension, the spiritual, the moral, then you can get everything green here but red over there. God forbid. Uh, then, okay. So I just repeat here new opportunities are being opened up for KIRKHS departments to explore new areas of research and relevancy. Although the SDGs concentrate on economic, social, and environmental dimensions, my question is what about psychological, sociological, governance, this is where political science comes in, spiritual, um, comes in, intellectual, fiqh comes in, metaphysical, Sunnah, Quran, Sunnah, and holistic education. This is Kuliah education comes in. What about green medicine? <clears throat> what about green science? What about green technology? Green architecture and environmental design? Green ICT, Professor What about green law? <laughs> so let's not talk about imposing the Sharia. Bringing in green law. So, because people like the word green, so they use it. Bil hikmah, so green law. Green law, inshallah, we have um, green crimes. Green party. <laughs> green party. <laughs> that is in Europe, isn't it? They have not been much following. People don't like to stop eating meat. Especially the Americans. Look at the burgers and all that huge okay, conclusion. Am I on time? So in light of the challenging and adverse scenarios, domestically and internationally, we sincerely hope that 
and pray that IIUM staff and students would be among the UMA's problem solvers. The Ulul al that is people who possess sound intellects. And the intellect which is connected to God. The intellect which is intuitive. The intellect which is grateful to his master. The intellect which also is very much aware of the hereafter. The intellect that never forgets God is the intellect of Guru Nanavan. And at the end of the intellection, they say, Rabbana, ma khalaqtaha na baqana, subhanaka, faqima adhana na. They become so conscious of the red future. The only line. Hopefully, we are part of this group also, because the prophets and the the uh, um, the real Allah, are the only line, the people who have been endowed true knowledge, and then the ulama, the scholars who have this khushu, khashiyah, and also uh, not just khashiyah, but khashiyah, khashiyah. The scholars who have this uh, feeling of awesome uh, regard for Allah and fear of His retribution and looking forward to His reward. Um, we want to be the leaders who are capable with uh, a man, trustworthiness. We are al Qadirun and al Umanan. Carry a man with us, and we have the means, the, the ability to perform our tasks um, efficiently and proficiently, professionally. We are the Muslim people who bring about reform, uh, people who not just bring about reform, but able to bring together two warring parties or two warring groups, like we have now five warring Malay parties all scrambling for power and all are saying now claiming they're doing it for the sake of the country and people and the religion but when they get in and they forget what they say and it's just power for my party and that's so on so muslihun is the group of people who can bring together uh, people who are not on good terms so we have already uh, the basis for that. The common idea is that, um, but somehow, because political differences are so deep, uh, we cannot come together. But for our future in Malaysia, particularly in Malaysia, because our number is quite small, 65%, maybe by 2050 it could be more if we produce more. Too keen to produce. Like in Europe, they expect by 2050 there be more Muslims than Christians in Europe. Um, we are good in, in procreation. That's about it. Other than that, other people are better than us. And then the dua bil hikmah wal hal. So we are the people who preach Islam with hikmah and also by by manifesting uh, the virtues of Islam in, in real terms. And then the Ibad al Rahman, Allah describes the Ibad al Rahman uh, as people of, of great humility and people not concerned about what you will, what will say about you. And then you just, you just pass by those people who try to taunt you and just say, yeah, okay, leave me alone, salam. Okay, then the wasail of rahmatan al-alameen in real terms. So inshallah, we hope that our, our academic staff will be able to convey this to our students. And IIUM can check out, I'm sure the student affairs with uh, Dr. Prof. Zul, uh, Zul Kifli Hassan being our own product and a good leader. And he has studied leadership very well. He should be able to take this up and mold our students to become the problem solvers, the ulul and the 
ulama uh, and also uh, and you have ulama uh, al waqi and ulama al nas working together in shah so we have now the job of the heads of department is to regularly review and revise the curricula uh, not because the ministry is asking you for that but in what way is our curricula really oriented to serve that purpose if it is not oriented because our curricula was drafted at a different time when the environmental crisis was not that serious when the earth is not being threatened now in a collective way so we had that curriculum we just do uh, you know um, uh, small changes here and there um, and that's not enough so probably we may need to devise curriculum in light of this current and future challenges because we have to respond uh, to the context so the text has to respond to the context so we have scholars of context and scholars of text in our project they need to come together uh, so, so that our social science programs our humanities program and review knowledge programs will be able to produce Islamic agents of social change and agents of civilizational transformation. Again, this is bombastic, but, but we want this uh, message to be carried to our students in Malaysia and abroad. But we have seen some good products, I'm sure. Those of you who have been abroad, our rector has also seen how our alumni are performing throughout the world. Our rector has also gone to uh, another site, the first rector to go to, to South Africa. And, and met some of the Muslim students there. All right. So, uh, in fact, our alumni uh, are doing very well in many countries. So one day I hope there's a book on how our alumni is in fact changing uh, societies um, for the better. So, so in that way, IAUM can play a more meaningful global role by helping humanity to live in accordance with the higher objectives of the show. And I would like to end with uh, some reminders from the program. If you don't mind, I have another 10 minutes. 10 minutes? Good. This is part of the cool love, because we are in the last day of a uh, young Tashri. This is our Vikram. I take this from Tafim al Quran because I find Mawludi's uh, Tafsir very useful here. Hopefully, it is relevant to what we have discussed earlier. All of that is shared out in Jim. Ayahsabun and Nama Mumitu Kumbihi, Mimali Wabali. Usari Alahum, Fil Khairati, Belay Shahun. إن الذين هم من خشية ربهم مشفقون والذين هم بآيات ربهم يؤمنون والذين هم بربهم لا يشركون سلام الله العظيم. okay um, do they fancy that our continuing to give them wealth and children? means that we're busy lavishing on them all kinds of good. We're talking about rich nations, the affluent nations, America, um, some you know, countries in Europe, and of course in Japan, um, and their population is increasing, and their wealth also increase. They should not be just because of the increase of wealth and population and power that this is God lavishing them uh, the now. They, they do not perceive the reality of the matter. Okay, now I read to you the tafsir given by Abu Ala Mawudi, Rahimahullah. This question has been posed as a proof of the main theme of the surah. It is meant to remove the misconception of success, welfare, and prosperity. Remember, I talked to you earlier about their misconceptions? 
success, welfare, prosperity. But these are the words we use. We want prosperity, we want welfare, success, which the least believers have formed to delude themselves. According to them, the one who enjoyed the good things of life and wielded power and influence in the society had attained success. So, in the ranking of the countries with the successful or happy and so forth, then you have you know, those countries, uh, non-Muslim countries. Because they have the good things of life, the standards of living are high, all right, and they have power, and they have influence. <coughs> so, they are successful. But that's a very shallow, one-dimensional understanding of the concept of success. On the other hand, the one who, has, who, who is de deprived of this thing uh, is a failure. This misconception had involved them in another serious misunderstanding. They thought that the one who had attained success was in the right. So if you are successful, you are big and powerful, you must be right. So we must be right. In other countries are wrong. They have to come to us. We have to bow to them. Uh, we have to bow to them. You don't have to come to us. Uh, how, otherwise, how could he have attained all the successes? On the contrary, the one who was apparently deprived of this thing was surely wrong in his creed and erroneous in his deeds and was under the wrath of God or gods. As this misconception is one of the greatest deviations of the materialist, the Quran has stated it and refuted it in different ways, at different places, and made the reality plain. For instance, see Al-Baqarah, see al ahraf see Al-Tawbah, Yunus, Hud, Al-Ra'an, uh, Al-Kahf, Maryam, Taha, Al-Anbiya, and so on. In order to remove the above mentioned conceptions, one should keep in mind the following. Success is a far higher thing than the material prosperity and the transitory success of an individual, community, or nation. Number two, it is absolutely wrong to consider prosperity and success as a criterion of truth and falsehood. <coughs> Number three, it should be noted well that this world is a place of test. This, is, this conception is not there. We need to bring in this. This is a place of ibtila, minallah. And ibtila can come to Khair can come to shah. The test of Allah can come through good things or bad things, through adversities or niceties. But it is a period of trial. And Maududi has said it a long time ago. He said, just imagine you are in an examination hall. So we are in this world in the examination hall of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But this concept is not there at all in the secular humanist worldview perspectives of nations, organizations, what have you. Um, it is true that even in this world, sometimes there is punishment or reward, but it is on a very limited scale. And even in this, there is an aspect of the test. Therefore, it is an utter folly to consider material success and prosperity. People keep on measuring material success and prosperity. GDP, per capita income, consumption of this and that, blah, blah, blah. And then they come up with, and then our country is very low. But usually you have three, four countries, UAE, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Uti, somewhere there. Again, going by the wealth of these countries, not by the poverty of the heart, but by the wealth of the, by the depth of their pockets. Uh, therefore, it is okay. Um, the oh, all right. And that the recipient is in the right, and so the beloved of, of, of the Lord, and vice versa. Moreover, the tests and trials of individuals and communities are of many varieties, and the seeker of the truth must understand at the outset that the worldly success or failure of the people is not the result of ultimate reward or punishment and cannot be regarded as a criterion for the right or wrong creed, morals and actions, and the sign of being the beloved of God 
otherwise. I think the Jews use this a lot. Because they are, they still regard themselves as a So I can do what I like. Because God loves me already. All the goings, they are condemned. But we, the, the, the favorites of God, we can do whatever we like. So that Jewish mindset is still there. The whole world is not addressing that. So uh, capturing Gaza, making it to the world largest prison on earth, and then um, and now um, you know, uh, colonizing land next to it, West Bank is going to be colonized, all that, and uh, America endorses that. And this is the greatest injustice, the greatest hypocrisy, and the greatest misconception of power and uh, the very high mobile is very good. Konami did very well. <laughs> uh, one must have firm belief that truth and righteousness will ultimately gain uh, victory over falsehood and wickedness. As regards to the criterion of truth and falsehood, right and wrong, one must judge this in the light of revelations and the teachings of the messengers, because common sense confirms the same is supported by the general conception which mankind has always had of good and evil. Surely those who stand in war for fear of their Lord, that is, they do not live a carefree life devoid of the fear of God. They live in awe of Him and are fully conscious that He oversees and watches them in all their motives and actions and they are thus deterred from thinking and doing evil. We have full faith in the signs of the Lord here, about the signs of the Lord. How do these says here? Signs here means both divine revelations to the prophets and the signs found in man's own self and in the universe around him. To believe in the verses of the book is to affirm them, and to believe in the signs of human self and the universe is to affirm the realities which they point to. That's about it. Um, so I come to the end and uh, I would like to take this opportunity once again to thank my dear brothers and sisters, particularly the, uh, the senior ones, not the old ones, uh, in the front row, uh, on this side of the room. That side is young, this side is senior uh, for, for coming and wasting your time to be two hours, but you'll be well rewarded after this, in this world, shall <laughs> Today. Uh, so, I uh, thank you very much once again. Please uh, forgive me for any mistakes, and uh, I would like to, maybe we can have you, because we have our hand in hand. I think we do need to speak about this one to uh, seek your forgiveness if I have said anything that might not be your feelings um, and uh, whatever is good is from the last time Tyler I am really responsible for bad things when they have been in my presentation. Before we had that, we'll start from the world.